So yeah, good evening everyone and uh, welcome and thank you for being here today, um, especially today when there's so many things going on. Um, I'd like to start with respect and gratitude um, that this event is on the unceded territories of the Muslim, Squamish, and Slavitif nations. And as I was saying, there are some really important actions um, that are taking place locally, such as the rally at the Vancouver Art Gallery today, um, as part of the Rainbow Week of Action for Queer and Trans Rights, and of course the ongoing encampment at UBC in solidarity with Palestine. I encourage everyone to continue finding ways that they can sustainably be involved in local and or global movements against injustice and oppression. And with today's trans-focused rally in mind, I'd like to share something from a double book launch um, that I was at last week called The Regulation of Queer and Trans Disabled Bodies by two authors, Gary Kinsman and AJ Winters. At the event, Gary Kinsman shared about how we often frame the current conservative right-wing political agenda of attacking trans people simply due to being a vulnerable target. While we as trans people do continue to face large amounts of oppression and systemic barriers, trans people and trans movements also undermined the conservative right-wing social order and gender binary. Trans people being here, living our truths, creating, and continuing to sustain and build community is more powerful and revolutionary than we often lead are led to believe by certain predominant narratives. So, about the event. The little art gallery events here at Cross and Crows are organized on a mostly monthly basis to highlight queer, trans, BIPOC, and otherwise underrepresented artists and writers. And I'm your host and coordinator, um, Taz Solis. Hey, hey. <laughs> and uh, we want this event and events like this to be as accessible as possible to everyone. So uh, there's no entrance fee, but if you would like to support the wonderful artists and creators uh, that are here tonight, aside from purchasing their arts, book, zines, like at that table over there, and from the art here, um, there's also a tip jar that's a little blue jar over there that's mod podged and has a label and things. <laughs> and um, that will just be split between the performers here tonight, which is a newer addition to the events. Also, Crossing Pros recently started a Patreon, which you can also use to support more local events with artists and writers like these. So, speaking of art, tonight's featured artist, whose work will be featured at the shop for the entire month. So, if some of the people you know um, would like to check out some of the art and things in the space, and especially the featured artist for the month, but are not able to today, they have the entire month to do. So, um, Tsunami, would you like me to read your bio? Yeah, sure. <laughs> Traditional Sue is a cute pop South Asian artist, poet, and painter. Their art career started in their teenage years with an interest in traditional, neo-traditional tattoo work, and from there branched off into a mix of styles and mediums. Since then, they've worked to build a small business around their art, selling stickers and prints in five stores around Vancouver and counting. Okay, hello everybody, can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. This off. Thank you. Perfect. Um, okay, so I am an artist, a painter, all that jazz, but uh, I started acrylic core painting, and these are all my works. These are all like pretty fresh, actually. I, you know, procrastination is king. <laughs> um, but uh, I started these, and I started acrylic pouring because I was uh, really tired of holding myself to a standard of perfectionism that I could not achieve. Like, I am not a perfect person, nobody is, and I was having a really hard time showing that to myself. And I started acrylic pouring because it really depends, like, I can't control the outcome of these, of these paintings. I can't control anything about them. All I can do is put them on the canvas and hope that they don't turn into a muddy color. That's all I can do with them. And so this has really been therapeutic for me. 
um, I've known Taz for a very long time, actually. <laughs> very <laughs> long time. Um, we met in a career youth group. And then through Taz, I have come here and I have branched out to a whole bunch of places. Um, also, I want to say that I'm really, really thankful for Crossing Crows and for Taz and for being, being able to have a queer, like, bookstore. Like, back when I was 15, I don't think of the, I don't know if this existed, really. <laughs> Um, but it makes me really, really happy to be able to be here and to speak and have my artwork yep. hung up. Okay, taking a breath. Taking a breath. Um, I will also be reading some poetry today. Uh, I've been writing since I was probably like 15, so I have a whole bunch of um, poetry, and I'm hoping to maybe turn that into a book someday. But. I don't have any of this poetry memorized, so I will be looking at my phone while doing this, just to let you know. Um, okay. Let's start. Okay. So, I'm going to preface the first poem by saying that I am a first-born, or first-generation-born uh, uh, Indo-Canadian. My parents immigrated here from India in the 90s, and um, I'm very, very thankful that I have been able to be born in such a fantastic country. And I am, I still have family back in India that I miss very much. So I wrote about the days that I was in India with my family. Um, just uh, wanted to do a content warning and let you guys know that it does um, discuss dying. I know that sounds bad, but like it does. Okay, so I'm gonna start. It's called Really Hot Days. <sighs> really hot days remind me of my home, the one across the sea with mangoes ripe on the vine and yellow grass. If I close my eyes, I can almost taste the dust in the air, feel the warm embrace of my family members that I miss so dearly. Smell the petrichor off the hot cement floor after a fresh monsoon rain. Time zones apart feel like worlds apart, and they are when your family is dying. And there is no way to comfort your aunt, because her husband is taking his last breaths. There is no chance for her to say goodbye to her father, to her husband. Both lay in hospitals, continents apart. Isolated, but not unloved. Both gone, not even a month apart. The borders have been closed for I don't know how long. There is no physical way for us, let, her, let alone her own children, to be present. All we do is wait. Most of my memories are spent on drinking chai on the veranda or dancing in the rain with my papa, playing holy with pails of water mixed with gulal and water pistols, seeing the smiles of all my family members together once again. Really hot days remind me of my home. Smoke from the wildfires, mimic the smog in the air, the sun, a red ball in the gray sky. If I shut my eyes real tight, I can still get a glimpse of us on the rooftop, celebrating life. Thank you. Um, this poem, this poem was, uh, was written during COVID. Um, I had a lot of family members who passed away from COVID, unfortunately, here and in India. And my uncle and my grandfather, my uncle in India and my grandfather here, both passed um, within like a, less than a month of each other. Um, and it was really hard. It was really hard. I couldn't be there to support, like I couldn't be there to support my grandpa because uh, during COVID times, you weren't allowed to visit the patient. So there was a lot of zoo. And in India, India was um, disastrous uh, when COVID hit them, and there was there just was not enough resources. So I wrote this about um, a happy memory that I had, and I peppered it in, or I peppered some things into it. My next poem is going to be less brave than this one was. Um, this one is actually going to be about I. As a, when I moved into my parents, um, when we moved into our new house, we had a neighbor, and I used to smoke cigarettes out of my window, while my neighbor would also smoke cigarettes, but like not on his little balcony, but we would be facing each other. 
we wouldn't see each other, but we would be facing each other. And I wrote a little poem about that. Never gave it to him, but I did think about it. Um, but I'm going to read that one next. And this one is called Last Smoke Before Bed. The creak of a door, a sliver of light, slips and illuminates the evergreen tops. A sigh of relief echoes between our two walls. I hear the flick of a lighter. An orange glow appears. Floating, up, floating about an arm's length away from a dark shadow, mostly hidden behind the evergreens I always complain of. We end up mimicking each other's actions. Swimmers in a line, diving in at the same time, synchronizing the timing of raising our separate cigarettes to our separate lips. It's a small solace. Two strangers simultaneously trying to kill themselves just a bit quicker. The only form of intimacy we know at this point in life. Ash, take a drag. Ash, take a drag. Rinse and repeat. The wash cycle, the wash cycle is almost over. We puff away together until one of us tires or hits the bus. Hit the, hits the butt. There we are. I once again hear the creak of a door. A sliver of light illuminates the tight-knit needles. I hear a gentle slam in his own way of a good night. Okay. And that is all for me. I hope you guys enjoy. And uh, please don't just stick around. And please feel free to donate to all the wonderful artists that we're going to have up here today. Thank you. Thank you. The next performer that we have, would you like me to read your bio? Sure. Ailey works in technology and is passionate about art. She mostly works in mediums of music, drawing, and written word. Intersectionality tends to be at the center of her work and personal philosophies. Thank you. Um, I just came to share poetry today, so let's dive in. Simple stones. Evidence of a past, shapes of former things. Their shadows left in circles, broken lines, crumbled stone. Voices long silent except in my head, I am swept up and carried off in their reality. Left to question the genuineness of my own reality, I am reminded of times when I sat with recorded discs of music, their sound etched into plastic with finality, and at each moment spent with this immutable object, a different experience unfolds. As if magic brought it all to life, I know this cannot be true. These physical things have their own simple permanence. It is me that is alive, become I, the sound chamber that breathes life into such a singular thing. So too these ancient cairns vibrate with lively mind. It is I who carries their eternal meaning, reminding them of their purpose, setting them to task. Um, I had an experience on international, uh, I had an experience on International Women's Day, um, had to call a bank, had to do some things that trans people hate to do when they have to do things. Um, so, I once had to ask permission from myself to live. I want to impart to you the impact of denying yourself the truth you know you deserve. Not because you cannot have it, but because you do not feel safe enough to take it. Just today I had to call that old bank on the other side of the border to unlock my card. An old account from an old life, a name that no longer had meaning. The money spends the same. It's the fraud department. They don't care why my life has changed. Dead naming myself once again, am I still asking for permission? No. This time it's more like putting on someone else's skin, their mind and presence long gone, just a veneer of safety and submission. In the past, I hated the person on the other end of the phone. I used to feel like I was a soldier on that call, preparing to defeat my enemy, demanding they see me. Even my, with my death, may my side win. That's not how it feels anymore. Instead, I hear her voice. I hear the inflection of her first language different from my own. I hear her read the script she's expected to read, submitting to her job. So she can perhaps have safety in her own life. She doesn't know my plight. She knows she is not my enemy. So I sit here on this phone with her, with gentle care, tending to each other's wounds, her and I. No longer soldiers on opposite sides. Together we are pressed into the same inhumane weight.
This one's a nice pick-me-up. So, I am the goddess of electricity and energy, commanding in the light for me from the skies. I master the thunder with my thighs, and my tits are discoed. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. And so our next performer, would you like me to also read your bio? Sure. Oh, sweet. In Chloe's second appearance uh, as a performer for these events, uh, Chloe Cocking writes poetry, dark urban fantasy, fairy tales, and sternly worded letters of complaint. She loves fancy shoes and all things caffeinated. She lives in Maple Ridge, BC with three humans, three cats, and one nervous, res nervous rescue Yorkie. Uh, World Without End is her second book of poetry. Her other works, all on Finn's imprint, include Three's the Charm, Short Stories, 2021, Hector, Poetry, 2019, Fables, Fictions, and Fantasies, Short Stories, 2018, and Blood Rain, Fiction, 2017. Cool. Common is not, never was exactly common. Common is not the word we need. No word I know for what I know we need. Waters. One swimming pool. Chemical birth stew. It's not the chlorine that makes your eyes red. It's the attention of boys on your no longer flat chest, along with father's fists. Girls whisper side eye over tuna sandwiches. Two pond. Auntie Pat waved, meaning come out, come out now. I did. Little girl body in a one piece, compact, dolphin dense. There were leeches on my shins. Auntie Pat burned them off with her menthol cigarette till their soft bodies curled and fell. Number three, Lake. Rolled off the air mattress, little girl log. I didn't know I was drowning, so cold my collarbones ached. Bob up, take a breath, float down, whisper a trail of bubbles. The ocean's dark shoulders rise and fall all night. And so it is with love, prevailing or otherwise. A flow and ebb like breath. Maybe it's not enough. And sometimes, forgive me, it can be hard to care. Whatever the end is, it will happen long after I'm gone. My children will be gone too. And they've had the good sense not to have children. And yet, and yet, I'm still in love with the world, hoping for the best. Day 38, COVID pandemic. Grief can be a small bird on a frozen rail or something much larger until the breath is gone from your body and your wet eyes no longer see. And I think I'll do one last one. It's called Today. Is cross stitch an encryption key and all the stitchers spies? No matter. Kneading bread, same as breaking bones. Will the hand that rocks the cradle finally cradle the rock? Is today the day? Tara Sidhu uh, Fraser is a queer writer and creator of South Asian and Scottish ancestry. She graduated from the University of Victoria with a BA in Anthropology, and her work has been published with Autostraddle and Anathema Magazine, among many others. When My Ghost Sings in is her first um, book published with uh, Arsenal Pulp Press. She lives in Vancouver, and also the book is available for purchase here today. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Okay, um, yeah, so I, I wrote this book because when I was 32 years old, um, I underwent a stroke, a brainstem bleed, 
And afterwards, um, after surgery, um, piecing my memories back together was quite difficult to do. And the way that my brain was able to really construct what happened and how I saw the world was my pre-stroke self, whom I called ghost, and my after being. So I'm going to read from my first chapter, The Memory Box. You love the summer. I know this because I still have all your photographs. In this one, you are sprawled over concrete, tanning yourself beneath the suburban sun. This picture was captured by someone who loved you. This I know because you are smiling, your eyes are warm. Behind you is the back of a white stuccoed house, a weeping willow to one side of it. You tell me this is where Mama hangs the family's underwear on the laundry line for everyone to see. It kills you with embarrassment. Thick stalks of grass grow under the line, overlooking the garden bed. Mama's garden has raspberry bushes and rich soil. It must be late afternoon in the photo, because the heat is thick, your body damp. You are surrounded by ancient dandelions, and the wild grass tickles your thighs as you longingly gaze through the widened slit of wooden fence towards the back laneway, the other side. My memory, your memory, says that there is neither an end nor a beginning to the street. There is nothing beyond the white stuck at home and Mum's garden patch, that there is only the grass and the raspberry bushes. Even though, according to maps and to other stories, we're both aware that Charlotte Avenue is a dead-end street. So there is an ending. There is a beginning. It's quiet here. When the sun disappears and the night blankets everything, I can hear faint footsteps in the upstairs kitchen and someone washing dishes. I can remember squeezing my eyes shut to capture shapes of orange and black, and the gang of children has claimed the woods by the house as their territory. In the laneway behind the house on Charlotte Avenue, the neighborhood children's stained sneakers hover over the pebbled concrete. Against the pale sky lies a ravine, damp with leaves and muddied waters. This is where the children played. This is where you played. The trees serve as forts for young and backrests for mopey teenagers, swimming in oversized hoodies, necks decorated with thick chains and metal spikes. Their frail bodies slumped against the wide tree trunks, your friends, your memories. See, here you are during puberty, that difficult transition from goblin to elder goblin. Another picture of you drinking the heat, eyes caked in thick liner, lips dressed in fuchsia. The dark lipstick reminds me of women with voices enriched with whiskey and cigarettes. Their crackled chords melt my heart. Remember this. Low waisted shorts grip your hip bones while your arms, still a blank canvas, reach upwards towards the sky. You look as though you're praying to the heat. Summer is my season as well. We share this. My skin also drinks the light, breathes a sigh of relief after enduring the long winter months. I pray to the sun, thank her for warming my body. Nestled in the photo album, there's a cola-stained Polaroid of an amusement park, your hand gripping the thin string of a balloon, your freshly shaven head resting on a pale boy's shoulder. These days, he lives in a crooked farmhouse down a thin road in Mount Finlayson, where at night, when there are no lights, the stars swallow the laneway and blur your vision. You only have one photograph of the boy, but he says you were close, thick as thieves. This photo album lives in Ghost's memory box, nestled among the ratty t-shirts and hardcover journals. His pages are filled with words that wash over the outer edges of the paper. There's only one entry from the day Ghost disappeared. A few shaky letters squeeze together, their bodies gasping for air. These letters from that day in November are her last song. When I ask Ghost what she wants, she grasps my heart, licks her lips, and whispers stories. She narrates her life in faded photographs and silent films that are buried in various areas of my body. In the marrow of my femur, she stores the subway's sticky seats, charcoal-covered fingers, a nude tall portrait that burned her cheeks when displayed on the wall next to everyone else's fully clothed renditions of themselves. And Merida. There's a thinly veiled memory of Merida that ghost has carved into my right thumbnail. Beneath certain light, I can see it ingrained in the deep grooves that run vertically across the nail bed. Merida. 
Whenever I slip the tip of my finger over the grooves, go smacks her lips and begins. Dent number one, Meredith's mouse of a thin wire stretching from one cheek to the other. Dent number two, Sisters is the night home where the music ricochets through ghost bones when she meets Meredith in the dark. Neon lights skitter across the floor and Meredith's hair shimmers. There's a red door in the corner of the club and someone is knocking. Dent number three. Meredith and Ghost are in the back alley from somewhere far away, the low murmur of cars buzz over the metal trash bins, past concrete houses and unlit street lamps. This is when Ghost's heart explodes for the very first time beneath the faded moon, her breath stained with sweet soda water and gin, and every other kiss I did not understand until today. Ghost love note to Meredith. Dent number four. Ghost plays this film for me in small flashes while squeezing my esophagus with her tiny hands until my breath stops and everything is silent. There is a futon with soft petals decorating the bedspread. Ghost is curled beneath the blanket, slips listening to saliva, quivering, holding the weight of the news. This all happened well before she moved to the island in the middle of the sea, years before she met the boy. But the boy who lives in the crooked farmhouse says so he knows a different tale. When I describe the postcards that accompany my nail dents, he shakes his head and fills them into pieces. Not like that, he corrects me. Meredith was brief. You only had two dates, remember? And then Ghost whines, and the boy finds her missteps. Her postcard image shudder and transform into the boy's tale. Meredith, with her shaggy hair and, inst and distant eyes, swims from bedroom to the bathroom, and it's time to leave. Ghost confesses to Meredith that her heart is singing. Meredith's eyes are distant as she sips her coffee and explains she's leaving for New York in a couple weeks, where another woman's waiting for her. Ghost's cheeks burn the same color they did in class that day because she's naked all over again, and the audience, Meredith, is fully clothed. On the palm of my hand are deep curved lines that split like tender stalks of grass. These are ghost life lines built with inconsistent memories. The memory box helps, but old photographs serve as evidence, helping to prove or disprove a story, showing me what is and what was, tangible evidence. I can't rely on ghost mental postcards because she's a liar who forgets the truth, magnifies her desires. Ghost only has a few photographs from the old days. One is of the beach house. This is while Mama and John were still married. After John left, the family photographs stopped, and then Ghost left, and the world was undocumented for many years. Ghost tells me that the beach house was tan, the paint fresh. There are white towels in the kitchen, and the living room floor is built from the darkest wood of the tree trunk. There's a bookshelf with romance novels on their cover. Blonde men whose muscles tear through the ruffled blouses and a long window that looks out onto the lake. Ghost tells me this is where she'd sit for hours, listening to the water's waves. In the photograph, the beach is cool. I know because the sun is shining. Ghost is dressed in an oversized white t-shirt and a long heavy skirt, her hair tangled with the lake's breath as it grazes the land. Resting beside her is a yellow raft with rubbery paddles. Ghost has slipped the seaside story into my left molar, somewhere just above the toothed root and below its crown. She tells me that this photograph has captured just after she ventured out in a storm. Beneath the leggy flashes of lightning, she says that her inflatable raft tossed about in the dark water as she tumbled into her murky horizon further and further from the shoreline. Thank you. And so for the last performer for tonight, um, it was going to be Sajia Kabir, and I'm just going to read her bio, even though um, she wasn't able to make it tonight. But instead, I will be a last-minute replacement, so you'll get a poetry from me instead. <laughs> so... Sajia Kabir is a singer-songwriter, fusion ballet dance student, actress-writer um, based in New Westminster. 
Her work is informed by her life as a neurodivergent, genderqueer, Bangladeshi, Canadian Muslim woman. And if you would like to find from any of the artists that have been here tonight, um, you can totally reach out to Cross and Crows, to me, to have solace, um, to follow on the socials and all that jazz. Yeah. <laughs> so some of these are a mix of newer poems and some of them are some old poems that I excavated from a zine from 2018 that was um, basically an archive uh, from writing that I'd done from when I was 17 to 20 something, um, including some old Tumblr deep dives. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, poetry. When my mind sees paragraphs of text and decides all of them are terms and service instructions. In a blink, my eyes forget my glasses aren't on my head. <laughs> my eyes droop with fatigue overwhelmed by consumption of flat words. Poetry, found in scribbles on walls, bouncing bulletins of brilliance, ephemeral snacks of textual loquaciousness, replacing ads on the bus, notes nestled in nooks and crevices, slim books slipping between seams of my consciousness, chat, zine, song, dream. Flow feeding senses, emotions sipped strong, warm words dearly cupped in hands, stitched story spun, sticking like cotton candy. How novel each cloud of words. Some clouds pass as quick as brief shades on warm days. Others carve shapes and shadows into the garden of our skin. When city letters scream, slurry under sour halitosis, flash, claw under pupils. <sighs> Breathe, <laughs> seek, hear a poem to ease. Some from the archive. <laughs> from the boundless cosmos inside of you, it is an honor to explore but one speck of your solar dust. I hope I'm given the opportunity to learn entire solar systems of your being, if you allow me to. May I stare longingly at you. May I venture across the city just to be in your presence. May we freeze time for a moment with our hugs. May I interlock my fingers into yours and feel the energy between our palms. May your hands linger on the edges between my arms and the rest of the universe. May we hold our bodies together and interlock in the warmth of our timid veins. May I breathe in the stories from your kind lungs. May I shyly ponder your eyes, hoping fear will melt away from us. May I rejoice in the sound of your sweet voice. May you explore the crevices of my mind to find trust in its folds. May I whisper to you in foreign sounds so that one day you will know them too. May our lips dance on each other's skin and electrify us both. May I do this, all of this, or none, as long as it makes your hours less burdensome. Through uncertainty and fright, may you know I thrive on just one yes from you. Sparks like summer. Memory feeds fantasy. The golden beaches in my dreams cloud over the sand stuck in the seats. Drunk on time's aperitif, wait all year for the heat. Glasses pour, paws at the teeth. Lips get too afraid to meet. Hide in the shade, yearn for rain to wet our day. Choke on stale smoke and hay. AC cut what's overbaked. Catch embers in each glance. Brush close with clammy hands. Risking burns, does fire dare dance? A 
Another one from the archive um, that I wrote when I was 18. Uh, related to starting a shitty entry-level minimum wage job to the detriment of my physical and mental well-being. <laughs> Angsty mode. <laughs> What's wrong with you people congratulating parasites? Get them off me, all these layers black and white. Ironing out my imperfections just to float through this crowd. It will sink in, they say, but in it I just drown. Your melancholy normal, your everyday pain. In the end, what you do just continues the same. Stay the same to stay sane. Try to stay sane with the stains of the world's imprints running through your veins. Telling you how to be, how to deal, how to see, how to feel, how to kneel. I sit back, I appeal. None of this feels real! I can't go a day without questioning the way I must lacerate my brain to remain in their eyes sane. The sweet irony of this perpetual commotion is that this more than any really keeps me going. Pop a pill of insanity, stay along for the ride, because no matter what I do, the answer is hide. Run. Isolate to create the response to this teenage rage. Fuel for the stage, a pen in a cage, all for minimum wage on a soapbox, only full of blame. All I do is stand and take aim and repeat the blaze that one day they'll try so hard to tame. What's wrong with you people? Saving all your pocket change for a rainy day, yet it's flooding every Tuesday. Your socks are soaked and full of holes. Your walls are weak and growing mold, but you just keep on walking in the puddles. Fingers prune, you don't dare try. Your Sunday best, up where it's dry. The weight of water cloaks you underneath. The warm air would feel so strange. Would you remain, evaporate? where others seem to desiccate beyond the water logged and damp. A world unknown of solid land, how would it feel to understand, to walk with pride, not caught inside the puddles? <laughs> familiar patterns. My heart knows these familiar patterns. Loops of arteries, Hooks into yarn made of softened, stiff hands. Yearning, seeking beyond the empty sound of ache. Hope, tightened muscles, smile, strung together. My head treads carefully, gingerly, calculated. Then all at once I release, give body permission to leave, let go, let in. We jump, we flutter, sipping enchantment. Our heartbeats knit at motor pace. I leave the needle, seek ahead, secure, knowing I absorb into you powerful captivation. Thud. A sharp misstep treads on thin seams. A crack ruptures unnoticed. A row of stitches begins to unravel. Like decaying teeth, hidden betrayal behind a kiss. My roles of duty, devotion hold strong. Continue feeding your spell. I sweep away crumbs and gather loose threads, sewed into secret pockets. The frays rip wider as I stitch myself in place. Tear, repair, outwear. When will I be more thread than fabric? <laughs> the gravity of smoke. On a flame, you're throwing gasoline. The hiss of your rage can be felt through my arteries. A body far from in recovery from the gravity of smoke. The memory of the first crack turned leak is so embedded as we continue to seep farther from my heart's center glow. Honey, I crave, I eat. What I can filter through my teeth with tact of tongue I do deceive to dodge stings from bees. Light another incense as my lungs are in suspense. In the fog you think we're okay. It's just breath play, but the fresh air, I fear, is too delayed. And this will be my last one for tonight. It wasn't helpful. Vaguely shit. So much to bear, and I persist. I simply push myself through it. But that's over now. The dry skin, it unpeels from carbon, I reveal. 
uncoil anaerobic compression. I can feel spring in the wind, a new stage I begin. I didn't realize how much I've been begging for it. I hear the possibilities, prisms reawaken, parts I buried so deep. I forgot I was starving the hope out of me. Corrosive, I fell into your shadows, inspired from your unhealthy patterns. Now, liberty, ecstasy, my body spawned the magnet, a flutter, rush, a bloom beyond. I'm manic. <sighs> Welcome back. Feast in your recovery. Rebuild this energy into joyful, powerful, helpful new realities. <laughs>